Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to talk about making Elsa's Into the Unknown dress. So if you missed the post on Instagram a week and a half ago, I did share on Instagram that I am making Elsa's Into the Unknown dress. And in today's video, we're just going to talk a little bit about the patterning um, process of making this dress. And then in one week, I'll show you how I actually put these pieces together. So today we're going to talk about the patterning and um, in December of 2020, I guess I should start telling you guys what month this is. In December of 2020, I will have the pattern available to purchase. However, right now, as I'm talking about this video, and this video is going live, you can actually head over to Patreon for $5 and get this pattern. I don't know what it's gonna be priced at in December. We will all find out then. But um, for in the $5 tier, this pattern, as well as the embroidery files that go with the pattern, um, will be available for only $5. It will be much more than that on my website in December. So November 2020, if you're a patron, go do the thing. Or if you wanna be a patron, go do the thing. The question of the week for this week is, what is your like favorite comfort dish? Or if you do celebrate Thanksgiving and you're in the United States, um, what is your favorite Thanksgiving dish? Uh, stay tuned to the end of the video where I will answer that question too. I start my process with scrap cotton fabric, pins, my dress form, a sharpier marker of some kind, scissors, and my reference, which in this case is the Frozen 2 art book. I like starting with the bodice, followed by the sleeves, and then the skirt. This will be a full dress, but I still break this up into basic pieces first. When I started this process, I thought I was going to gather under the bust, and then I switched it to gather at the front. I basically just pin fabric onto my form, draw lines for the neckline, darts, center, and then cut that piece of fabric out and transfer it to paper for my first attempt. I use rulers and my French curve to clean this piece up and add seam allowance. Once again, this is not how the bodice turned out in the end, but this is part of my process. Lots of trial and error. From there, I cut my piece out on more cotton and then I sew it together like I would a mock-up and I pin it back to my dress form so I can move on to the next section. The next section is this diamond shape piece that they have the embroidery on. To make this section, I literally just measure that area and make a piece with paper that I think will work and then put it on cotton and attach it. I'll let you know right now this also doesn't work, but I think it's important to know what doesn't end up working for those of you out there that might be trying to pattern things yourself, or if you're trying to make this exact pattern yourself and you need some guidance. For the back piece, I'm going to do the exact same as the front, but this time I make sure that this piece lines up with the front at the shoulder and side, as well as take in consideration how the skirt portion of this dress will attach and look. For the sleeve, I decided to use a draping book that I have and make it completely out of math. This process is rather hard to explain, so here's just a pretty time lapse of me attempting and eventually succeeding at it.
So this is where I'm at with this. For starters, this gather stitch is gonna move all the way to this point here and gather tightly under here. Same with this, and this is where my zipper is gonna be. So this will be a little bit more fitted at that point. This right here is gonna move up about two and a half inches so that it'll go like that because this is just way too low. I'm gonna be corseting under this and I probably should be wearing my corset for this, but <sighs> YOLO. Uh, when you adjust this and this, the back actually fits okay. And also I have to consider the fact that like, there's gonna be a skirt attached to this, which is gonna change a lot of the aspects of it. It's sitting on my shoulder where I would like, like I want it to sit here, not up here. So like right here, it curses. And then um, the sleeves look a little big in the arm, but my concern is if I take it in here, I might be able to take the top in about a half an inch is like my lack of motion. Cause right now I have great motion, but then if I bring my sleeves down, look at how baggy they look. They look so big. So that's where I'm at right now. Cause I want to be able to do this and I want to be able to do that. Uh, and I do need to add at the ends of the sleeves, her little, her little thingy thing, her thing. Yeah. So anyway, this is where we're at for now. I'm going to try to get a skirt together. And this is the middle panel. This gets embroidery. The back is going to have embroidery. The bottom of the front skirt is going to have embroidery. There's going to be embroidery on the wrists. All right, more ma more changes have been made because I went down an internet rabbit hole and whatever. But basically, don't judge my safety pin. I thought I could just hand or sew this and not secure stitch it. Whoops. But basically, this is what it's going to look like. Obviously, this will get tucked in and this bodice piece will all be fully lined and have the embroidery and all that detail stuff on it. Uh, this looks pretty okay because it's going to have a skirt. Remember, it's going to have a skirt on it, so it's going to actually have some weight. So if I make this any closer before trying on a skirt, crazy things could happen. This is our zipper closure, and then this is what the back looks like. Again, the skirt will most likely weigh this down a little bit more. <sighs> now we're ready to draft a skirt pattern. And I've decided, even though in the book, it shows that there are there is like a full on seam here. We're just gonna embroider that spot. Like we're just gonna do the embroidery on that spot. So it's gonna be difficult. We're gonna make it work though, you guys, you know that. Right back to the pinning, measuring, marking, and cutting process for the skirt portion of this dress. I only made one side of the skirt back because it takes so much fabric, and honestly, I was lazy. The organza overlay will be a very close replica of this, which I'll go over in the actual construction video since I still have to take in consideration the embroidery on the back piece as well as the different seam lines. Here we are with the final um, mock-up and I am probably still going to make a little bit of an adjustment on the bodice sleeve shoulder bit, um, but overall I am really happy with how this looks. I chose to make it longer in the back. I know that it does just hit the ground, but I, I just love the image of her like walking up that ledge for um, Into the Unknown and having this little bit of a dramatic train. So I did it. I'm making a train on it. I have the ability to chop the train off if I hate it. Um, and I, I opted out of pockets in this. Um, I might make a pocket option for people or maybe as I'm making the dress, I will add pockets, but I, I'm not sure about if I wanna do a pocket because of how fitted the front area is. And if I were to put a pocket in, um, anything I put in that pocket will be seen. So like that's something to think about, but I still have the time to change it if I want. 
So yeah, um, I forgot to film in my outro my answer to this week's question, so I'm just going to tell you guys right now my favorite comfort food as well as my favorite Thanksgiving dish is homemade mac and cheese baked in the oven. I make mine with beer. I replace the milk with um, just either like a stout or a really, 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 really rich, full-bodied um, beer. Right now I'm actually replacing it with a Belgian quadruple, which my fiance brewed, but that's my favorite and it's got to have that nice little crispy top from the oven. Mm, I love it. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you like Disney, if you like ball gowns, if you like historical sewing, if you just like pretty things, please give this channel a thumbs up, subscribe, comment below, tell me what you're working on. Also, don't forget the question of the week is, what's your favorite comfort food and or what's your favorite Thanksgiving dinner meal side thing dish? Okay. Next time I won't sing it. I, I can't promise that actually. Okay, so if you would like to consider supporting my art and get this pattern, you can head on over to Patreon. It is in the $5 tier. You will also get access to the embroidery files. And this is for anyone watching this in November of 2020. Uh, as of December of 2020, this will be available on both my website and my Etsy. Um, and the embroidery files will be available as well. I can't wait till next week when we actually make this dress. And uh, until then, happy sewing.